Director Ray, um, on May 14, 2021, yourself as Director of the FBI and the Secretary of DHS, in consultation with Director of National Intelligence, jointly produced the report containing a strategic assessment and data on domestic terrorism. Um, of note, the FBI finally designated the 2017 shooting of congressional Republicans as an act of domestic terrorism carried out by a domestic violent extremist rather than suicide by cop. As the FBI initially had classified the shooting, how did the FBI initially reach its conclusion that the attack was suicide by cop? And uh, who made the determination? And then ultimately, why was there a change, do you believe? Well, Congressman, I appreciate the question. So um, as you may know, after uh, I think a very thoughtful conversation I had with Congressman Wenstrup in April, uh, I asked my team to go back and take a hard look at that particular shooting. And I think what we found is that from the time that I first arrived as director, the FBI's understanding of domestic violent extremism has evolved. And more and more we see domestic violent extremists motivated by mixes or almost mishmashes of ideological, socio-political, and personal grievances. Uh, and I think the shooter at the baseball practice that day back in 2017, I think is fairly considered an early example of that phenomenon. And so that's part of why uh, I wanted to be clear that the FBI considers that shooting an act of domestic terrorism, that we look at it under the umbrella of domestic violent extremism, and that if it same thing had occurred today, we would absolutely open it as a domestic terrorist investigation. And we tried to make that explicit, both directly to Congressman Wenstrup uh, and in the report that you referred to, which we formally transmitted to Congress. So would you consider that a change in posture by the FBI on domestic terrorists over, over, overall? Uh, well, it's part of a, I don't know about posture, but it's part of a, a more evolved understanding of the way in which domestic violent extremism affects this country. We are seeing much more often now, not people who commit attacks based on some nice, neat, cookie cutter ideology, and this is their sole motivation, but rather people who take bits and pieces of things together with some personal beef and then attack. And we consider that to be in many ways, the, the most uh, increasingly common form of domestic violent extremism. And so again, I would view not so much a change in posture as that attack was one of the earlier versions of this phenomenon that, that is quite rampant now. Like just the other day, we had these folks in, in Minneapolis, for example, who were so-called Boogaloo boys, but they were ultimately charged with trying to provide material support to Hamas. We had a guy the other day who uh, was subscribing to various uh, Islamist violent extremism, but also considered himself a neo-Nazi. And then with all of them, wrapped up with them, you have these people who blend into it personal agendas, have nothing to do with ideology at all. And so when you put all that together in sort of a salad bar of motivations, we think it's fair to look at something like the Simpson Field shooter as a domestic violent extremist, a domestic terrorist. And that's why, again, if it would happen today, I think we would certainly consider that part and parcel of what we call domestic terrorism. So it, in, since the George Floyd incident, there's been hundreds of flare-ups domestically in many of the larger municipalities throughout the nation. And you know, it was a long, hot summer last, last summer. What is the approach that the FBI is taking as we, here we are at the beginning of June, as we look forward, and uh, how, what is the approach that the FBI is using with those types of domestic flare-ups that we're seeing, again, across the nation? Well, we're uh, lashed up very tightly with our state and local partners. Um, when I go, and I've been to all 56 of our field offices, most of them more than once. I'm almost at all of them at least twice now. I've met with law enforcement from all 50 states, chiefs, sheriffs, commissioners, colonels, et cetera. Uh, and we're all very concerned about the rise in violent crime, the homicide rates in particular, and we all think that in some ways uh, the summer could be the worst yet uh, to come in a while. And so we're through our Safe Streets Task Forces, uh, through on the terrorism side, our Joint Terrorism Task Forces, our Violent Crime Gang Task Forces, um, a whole variety of ways we're working, trying to be lashed up very tightly with our state and local partners 
to do our part, and again, the FBI is just one part of a broader law enforcement response uh, to try to make sure that we do our best to protect our neighborhoods.